Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Do you celebrate Christmas? Chances are you don't, because I have a quite international audience. And not all people who watch my YouTube channel are from countries to celebrate Christmas. Anyways, it's the time of the year again. And I guess it's the holiday where you're supposed to get together with your friends and your family and celebrate together. But let me tell you something about Christmas that is less, less um, festive, so to speak. Did you know that Christmas and New Year are one of the times in the year with the highest suicide rates? And you may be thinking, wow Bart, you just ruined the mood. But it's a serious thing to talk about, you know. Because here's the thing, not everyone on this planet has friends or family to celebrate Christmas with. In fact, it's not about a stupid holiday, but I just wanted to take the time of this video to get your attention for the fact that many people of our generation are in fact lonely. It's an epidemic. I don't know really why it is, because I don't understand sociology, but it's a cultural problem among our generation and some of you will be blaming the internet or social media. But I think it's a more complex problem than that. I think we've grown into a very individualistic society where we are discouraged from making contact with people and where we are discouraged not to interact with people who, who, who aren't normal, who don't fit into the norm. And chances are some of the people watching this video may be alone. Maybe you don't have friends to celebrate with. Maybe you don't have family to celebrate with. You know what? If you are one of these people, I want you to know, you are not alone. It's not unique. Among people of my age, sadly, this is very common. And I believe we should be encouraged to talk about this. So that's why I am going to keep you company. This video is for all the people who are eating dinner alone in their apartments and have to feel sorry for themselves because they're alone. Well, now you don't. Here you have your internet friendship simulator. Here's a fun fact. Did you know one of the reasons that people watch YouTube is so that they feel less lonely? Okay, this is not always the truth. I mean, YouTube is very educational. You can, it makes you laugh, it makes you learn a lot of things. But a lot of people also watch it because they feel a connection with the people they are watching. And that makes them feel less lonely. That's what started originally the Korean mukbang trend, for example. It's because eating is a social thing in Asia. And some people didn't have friends to eat with. So they watch a person eating on a screen and they feel less lonely. So all of you may now say, but this sounds so depressing. Are you okay? Don't worry about me. I am okay. I have friends. I have family. Last but not least, I have all of you. The internet has changed my social life quite a lot. It's not a lie. Last year, I met a lot, new, a lot of new friends just because they watch my YouTube channel. So I guess having internet points makes you a popular person. It's not to brag. So um, I'm going to be answering some questions to you in this video. I did an FHQ and I'm also going to tell you about a Dutch tradition. Yes, very luxury. Do you see this? This reads Oli Bollen. Now, Oli Bollen are a very Dutch thing. At least I think, I don't think they have it in other countries. And if I translate Oli Bol from Dutch to English, it basically means something like oil balls. <laughs> now, I understand that doesn't sound very appetizing. That's true, that's true. But it's more or less junk food that we eat around December. Uh, it is associated with Christmas, and, uh, but it's especially associated with, um, with the New Year's Eve, basically. Um, 
but they're they're just a thing apart yeah you know it's it's not an, a new year's thing alone or a christmas thing alone you're just supposed to eat them like in december so i'm going to show you what they are it's uh, they are these deep fried balls of dough very crunchy uh, usually they have raisins in them now i'm not a big fan of them because uh, you, they give you a heart attack. There's so much fat and oil. Basically, it's the dough that absorbs the oil from deep frying it. So it's, yeah, they're gonna clog your arteries. They're gonna make you very fat. Last but not least, uh, I'm not really into sweet things. I'm more into savory things. But you know, just for the sake of making an interesting video and tell you something about my country, I wanted to show you only bold. But I'm gonna be honest with you. If I wasn't making this video, I would probably never have eaten them myself. Now, after holding, holding these things, just look at my hands. Can you see the, the, the fat on there, the grease? These things are so incredibly greasy. If you squeeze them, the fat will just come out. It's really incredible. Now, how are you supposed to eat these things? Ew, my hand is dirty. Ah, I hate having grease on my hands. Okay, let me wash my hands for a second. That's better. Now, you're supposed to eat these things with powdered sugar, or as we say in the Netherlands, poedersuiker. So you're supposed to powder them like this. It's like snow. <coughs> yes, that's right. Just a little close up for those who wonder what it may look like. Just look at that fat. Remember the name, Oli Bollen. All right, so uh, I'm about to consume my oil balls or uh, Oli Bollen right now. But at the same time, I'm going to be answering some questions from you from YouTube. Um, I asked you some questions for the FHQ video. Some of you sent me a message, so I'm going to be answering them while I'm going to eat my uh, deep fried grease balls, basically. I don't have any eating manners, by the way. Just so you know. One person asked me, how do you go about choosing which pieces to work with? Is there a challenging species that you would like to work with? Well, first of all, I really like to do, like to call what I do work, but it's not really work. In the end of the day, it's really just my hobby. And um, <clears throat> it's true that I'm making money with my hobby because I have a lot of social media stuff like this YouTube channel, but also a big website and other stuff. And people donate to me sometimes or um, they buy stuff from me or they even give me job offers. The latter one, job offers, is for me the big thing that I want. Because um, they don't only sustain me, they also give me more experience. For example, uh, one time I was asked to work in Cambodia to research butterflies and moths just because they found me online, so that was great. But uh, you should know it's really just a hobby and not work. And why is this important to, to, to understand? Because, well, because it's my hobby, nobody dictates me what species I'm about to breed. Okay, this is, if I want, if I want to breed this moth, then I will breed it. It's my choice, it's my hobby. It's just like being a painter, you know, if you're making a painting and you're gonna think oh what am i going to paint today am i going to make a landscape am i going to paint a city a naked woman i don't know 
modern art? It's your choice, you're the artist. Likewise, it is my choice what I want to read because it's my hobby and I do what I want. There's only one big fat limitation on this hobby and that's that not every species is <coughs> available um, in captivity. You see, some species are very hard to breed um, or, or nobody is really breeding them. You know, there's <coughs> over 250,000 species of butterflies and moths. Uh, some of them are very elusive or very rare. Uh, so rare that nobody can catch them to breed them. Um, laws also come into play. There's a lot of countries that uh, don't allow it to, to send live animals from there. For example, getting things from South America is very difficult. Uh, it's basically illegal to take eggs from the countries there or cocoons without very expensive and hard to get permits. Or from places like India or Indonesia, the laws are very harsh. You can even get arrested and thrown into jail if you take a moth or cocoons from Indonesia to the Netherlands without a permit. So what decides what I'm about to breed is really the market. There's like this hobby market of people selling eggs and cocoons and which has a limited amount of species. And from, from the species being offered there, I will choose the species that I find the most interesting. But it's not true that I can get any species I want. Um, they have to be available in the hobby. But uh, other than that, there's no restrictions other than what I just find interesting or fun to do. Next one. Hmm. What is the smallest species that I have ever bred? Well, the smallest species that I have ever bred is probably still big by moth standards. Because I specialize in a few moth families, such as silk moths, which are the biggest moths in the world, the Saturni Day. But also tiger moths, Arctidae, leopard moths, Lasiocampidae, sometimes even hawk moths, the Sphingidae. But it's not true that I like all moths. Well, actually, I do like all moths, but I don't breed all kinds of moths. So many of the smaller ones are left out. But you don't see them on this channel. Um, they are also difficult to film. I'm making a mess here. It's a difficult question because I don't even remember all the species I had. Hmm. What is the smallest moth I ever bred? It's probably... Hmm. Desauxus ancilla, the handmade. It was a very small tiger moth. Like they feed on leaf litter. And the adult moths are basically one centimeter big. I think there's an old video of them on my YouTube channel. You should check them out. Yeah, so definitely the smallest one. Robert asked me, how did you realize that moths were your future? I mean, I like to know the history of how now you have this job and at the same time hobby. I'm kind of curious. Well, Robert, I never realized that moths were my future. In fact, I've ruined my future for them. You know, since I was a young boy, there's only one thing I wanted in life, and that's moths. I don't care about making a lot of money. I don't care about being rich or <laughs> having a good looking wife or an expensive car or a villa. I've said this a lot of times. There's only one thing I care about in life and that's moths. And now that's, that may sound idiotic. And I agree, it is, it is idiotic, it's stupid, you know. But um, 
I've been that way since I was born. I've, I was born with a broken and a diseased brain. <laughs> it sounds weird, but <laughs> it's true. And people always laughed at me. Um, I tried to study biology two times and I failed because I don't know, I don't study well. I don't think I'm dumb, but uh, I am uneducated. Last but not least, I have problems concentrating and, pl and usually, especially planning. Uh, for example, for some reason, going to college is difficult to me because I don't have the skill to, 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 you know, to uh, make a planning. I'm a very chaotic person. I miss all my deadlines. I forget important things. Uh, so my dream was crushed of becoming a biologist. And after that, I keep doing moth stuff, but uh, it didn't pay off. And the reason I made this YouTube channel and all my websites and the other stuff that I have is because I still, I still only wanted, only wanted to do things with moths, and I had nowhere to, to put this energy, so to speak. You know, the thing about my my sick brain is it always wants to talk about moths. It always wants to think about moths. It always wants to do something with moths. And I couldn't because, well, my chances of getting a job involving them were zero. So uh, I had to do minimum wage labor, like work in a warehouse, a DHL, which, I mean, no offense to the people that do that. I still do it part time, but it really sucks. It's a shitty job. You shouldn't do that for the rest of your life. Um, Still, I kept going, I kept making videos, I kept making websites. Um, despite people telling me I should, you know, choose another career. I said maybe you should go do some, I don't know, accountancy. Or be, be a translator for English language or try another study. But I refused, I said no. I'm not going to be happy if I grow up to be uh, like English translator or whatever stupid job they recommended to me. I want to work with moths. I want moths and nothing else. So I was really stubborn, but my dreams were crushed. I've basically sacrificed my life to do this. And that my YouTube channel started growing and that I got a lot of engagement is really just, it was really just good luck. I didn't predict it. I didn't know it was going to happen. It just happened randomly, but it's not like I decided, oh, moths are going to be my future. It's the other way around. I, I, I ruined my future for moths. It's, it's something, you know, if I knew this much about programming or cars, I would have a job in one second. But moths, there's no money in it, you know, almost none. And I was really lucky to have to grow my social media. And after that, I, indeed, I got job offers. Uh, <clears throat> In fact, I'm uh, I'm discussing getting a full-time job now for uh, for a, um, a butterfly farm full-time. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I'm not allowed to discuss the details yet. We're still negotiating the salary. But if that happens, it means I will be a full-time reader, full-time, paid with a good salary. I'm going to be so happy if that happens. But I don't know. It's it's not certain yet, guys. So, okay, please. Pray for me that this is going to happen. It would make me so happy. But uh, there were certain points in life where I was very depressed because uh, it, it looked like I, I would never achieve my dreams. Where I refused to get a normal job because I still wanted to do moth things and only moth things. I only want to work with moths and nothing else. And my friends, my parents <laughs> have often told me to stop doing this that I'm obsessive and I'm gonna be honest guys if uh, my YouTube channel never got this popular if my website never got this many reads by all of you then um, I still my life would be ruined I mean, it, it, it saved me you know it's what got my life back on track it's what gave me work with moths the thing the only thing I wanted was to work with moths and really you made it possible because I tried studying for it and it didn't work out. I tried so many things that didn't work out. But in the end, I think I found an alternative way that doesn't require a paper or an education. Um, last, I do want to say that 
I really would love to do research. So um, I'm trying to study now for the third time, despite failing twice. And I'm sure that I'm confident that if I keep trying and reinventing myself, maybe someday I will manage to complete an education. That would be great. But uh, my first priority is just getting work with them. I'm very close to getting it. Last but not least, you should know that I am not making a lot of money. In fact, my, my YouTube channel still costs me more money than it makes. Uh, breeding moths still costs me more money than it makes. So uh, at this point in my life, right now when I'm filming this, um, I still haven't achieved my dreams yet because right now I still have to work. Uh, in a warehouse, a DHL, for minimum wage. I still have to work a lot of hours to pay for my hobby. Um, I've written hundreds of pages on my website for free. They uh, also don't make me any money. So uh, it's still a huge drain on my life at this point, but I keep going because I'm stubborn. I'm sacrificing myself. I mean, I could get a normal job. I could stop wasting time on YouTube and on insects. But that's really the only thing I want. It's my dream to be like full time, work with insects. It's the only thing I goddamn want, guys. It's the only thing I want. And I'm going to get it no matter what. See? But to answer your question, moths were never my future. In fact, they were my enemy uh, because I'm so obsessive about them. They've probably destroyed a lot of friendships and relationships because I can't let it go. I have to be doing something with moths all the time. I'd rather be like dead or poor than, uh, than give up this hobby. So, uh, but it hasn't, I haven't made it yet. Okay. I'm not successful. I mean, I have a lot of viewers, but I still have to work. It's still, it's still a drain on my life and I hope to turn that around. So, um, but I was born with this passion, you know, from the moment I came <laughs> out of my mother, that sounds so terrible. Oh. From the moment I was born. Oh, please forget I said that sentence. Na English isn't my native language, so I say really weird shit sometimes. But, um, Natasha asked me, I have a hibernating small tortoise butterfly in the house. It moves about but seems okay. Should I put out food for it? What type of food? Well, if it's hibernating, you should leave it alone. The only thing it needs is cold. And if it's moving, that's a bad sign because uh, insects are cold blooded. And in winter, they rely on not using any body energy because they are cold blooded to hibernate. In fact, they don't need to eat at all in winter because uh, they don't use energy when it's cold. And if you see it moving around when it's hibernating in your basement, it means it's awake, which is not good. You should put it outside. It will hibernate in a, in a sheltered spot. And um, in fact, if you keep them warm, it will starve to death. And there's nothing you can do to save it. You should put it outside. Don't feed it, don't wake it up. Just put it in a cold sheltered place. In fact, In fact, the fact, the fact that the earth is warming up, yes, I know climate change in the Christmas video, blah, blah, triggered. But um, the climate is changing, you can deny that. It's becoming warmer, and that's very bad news for hibernating butterflies, because the warmer it is, the harder it becomes for them to survive in winter. Because they can't hibernate in a warm environment, because they waste body energy when it's warm because they are cold-blooded, so they starve to death in winter. They need cold winters to survive. Next question. I've heard that domestic silk moths can't fly because their bodies are too fat uh, for their wings to be able to support them. Is this true? Or are they grounded for some other reason? Well, the reason is very simple. It's because uh, first of all, domestic domestic silk moth uh, are purely bred to survive in captivity. They can't survive in the wild, they will die. And the thing about domestic animals is, they usually lose traits that they don't need to survive in the wild. 
As for silk moths, they are kept in small cages and they don't really have to fly to find a partner. So the first thing that happens when they become domesticated is they lose their ability to fly because it's useless, they don't need to fly. If you're a domesticated insect, you don't need to fly. I mean, you are locked in a cage with hundreds of other moths, so you can just walk over there and find a female. So the wings are a big waste of energy, so what does evolution do? Basically, it's use it or lose it, you know, they, the, the wings become reduced. Take a look at Bombyx mori, the mulberry silk moth. They don't need wings, because their cocoons literally hatch next to each other, so they can immediately pair. In the wild this is very different, because they have to travel a long time to find a partner. So then you need wings to fly. So it's basically a very simple rule. But yes, it's true that they are so fat that they can't fly. Somebody asked me, if you could moth trap in the United States, what moth species would be like the holy grail for you? Uh, let me look that one up because I forgot its name. Oh yes, guys, that's true. I don't know all moth species from my head. Let's see. Well, there's there's one extinct silk moth in the United States. That's been presumed extinct. And I'm going to look up the name now because I'm stupid and I forgot the name. I don't remember all the stuff from the top of my mind, you know. Sometimes before I record a video, I'm studying a script. Just so you know, on YouTube it seems like I know all these facts from the top of my mind. Hmm. Yes. It is Agapema Galbina. I'll show you a picture. It is found the lower Rio Grande Valley of Texas, west to southern Arizona, south to Tamau Tamaulipas and Baya, California, Mexico. So this moth is found uh, in the United States in Texas and Arizona, except for the fact that it has not been reported north of Mexico since the 1960s. Maybe extinct in the United States. If found, populations should be monitored. So this pretty little silk moth has been wiped out by humans in the United States. But the good news is the species is not extinct. Some of them are still surviving uh, in Mexico. But still, if you found it in the United States, it would, it would mean that you have rediscovered a species for the United States and you can add it to the list. Second of all, oops, I threw something on the floor. Second of all, it is really unknown if uh, any of these populations are still surviving because Texas and Arizona are a huge place, a big place. And it's not unthinkable that in some hidden place, maybe in some hidden valley somewhere, maybe still some, uh, some of these populations are still surviving. You don't know. Probably not, they're probably extinct. And it would be interesting to find one of them that would basically be a legendary find. So that's definitely what I would like to catch if I were in the United States. Truthus is probably extinct because humans destroyed its habitat, so um, it's probably another victim of uh, development. But you know, you don't know, there's not many people out there looking for a damn moth. People don't care about moths. It could still be out there somewhere. Probably not, but it could be. Okay, next question. Mm -mm -mm. If you're still watching right now, congratulations, you've watched 23 minutes of me rambling. Mm. Somebody asked me, what moths would you like to see introduced to the hobby that never have been raised before? 
Well, that's a bit of a paradoxical question. Because the moment something is introduced to the hobby, then it has been raised before. Because usually there's someone breeding them and then sending the eggs to Europe from other countries. And even if they are collected from the wild, then you are not the only person who is going to buy them. So the moment something enters the hobby, then it's basically already been exposed for everyone. But to answer your question, I would love to read Politisana Senera Sense. Let me show you a picture. It's probably one of my favorite silk moths. And here's a fun fact. I, this year I had eggs of this moth, but uh, they didn't hatch. I don't know why, but they didn't hatch. Um, hatching the eggs is difficult. You have to keep them cold for two months, but not freezing and completely dry and then you have to warm them up and make them humid then they will potentially hatch i don't know if my eggs were infertile or if i treated the eggs wrongly i don't know it's, it is a bit of a rarity so i don't expect to get eggs soon again but i maybe someday Another one I love is Eogroa Trimeni from uh, Namibia, uh, South Africa. They only feed on Melianthus, which is honey flower. If I have a lot of subscribers, I will breed it. But the chances of this thing entering the hobby are about 0%. Because it flies in one very remote area of South Africa and I don't expect anyone to go there to freaking mountains. Uh, of Namibia and South Africa, there's like this, um, I think it's called Richtersveld. It's like this desert that uh, once a year when it rains, the rain makes all the flowers grow. And that's when the moths fly. Um, if I ever am going to breed it, I'm going to have to catch it myself and prepare the food plant in advance because Melianthus is not something that can grow here randomly in Europe, you have to plant it in your garden. Uh, but if I, if I was rich, I would, I would go now and catch it and breed it. But uh, I'm not rich, I'm poor. Traveling costs money. But um, you know, maybe if I have like 100,000 subscribers, maybe, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Maybe in five or 10 years, I don't know. But um, if I had the funds, I would definitely go and uh, breed that one. Probably not going to happen, but you never know. Hmm. Next question. Do you plan on getting any more non-Lepidopteran anthropods or any other animals, really? Hmm. Well, the thing is, when I started this channel, I bred a big diversity of insects. And I know you are a very long-term subscriber. I've seen you comment on some of my first videos. So you probably subscribed to me in the time I was uploading a lot of different insects. Um, Truth is, nowadays I've become more of a specialist in moths and butterflies. I work in a museum collection of moths and butterflies. I work for butterfly farms. Uh, I have a, a moth website now that's doing very well, has over like 200,000 reads in a few years. Um, everything I do is moth, 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 moth. And other insects don't really interest me that much anymore, I'm afraid to say. I still like them. But they're not, you know, they, they don't interest me that much as, as moths anymore. That being said, um, there is a chance, there is a chance that I'm going to film a bigger diversity of insects. Why? Well, one, 
because it's good for views. Some of my most watched videos are still my stick insects and um, these crazy KT dits that I used to have. In fact, at the moment, my second most watched video is my uh, dragon headed KT dit. Yeah, it's that video. And um, I think it would be good for views if I showed maybe a good diversity of insects. I'm considering it. Uh, one thing that I am going to do is I'm going to breed these, um, these tadpole shrimp, triops, you know them? I'm going to breed those. So, um, you may expect a video of that. It will take a long time to make though. It could be finished in like March or April, but I'm going to breed them for YouTube. Okay. There's even more questions. Probably shouldn't have answered all of them, but uh, you know, I have time to waste. Tasha asked, what is the best country or town to go to to see wild butterflies and moths? Brazil. Brazil has the highest, ah, oh, this thing itches, let's get it off. Ugh. Stupid Christmas hat. Brazil has the, probably the highest diversity of butterflies and moths and insects in general or animals in general in the world go to Brazil the bad news is it's being burned down by their idiot president Bolsonaro like they're deforesting the rainforest like mad in fact uh, the Atlantic rainforest I think there's less than 10% left of its original size and now they are starting to destroy the Amazon Great, so go and see this. go and see the nature of Brazil before it's disappeared. So um, seriously it pisses me off to think about this country. Because no offense to Brazilians watching this. Because if you're watching this channel obviously you are interested in um, in wildlife and biology. And the thing is really your country is has so amazing nature really. It has such amazing incredible diversity of species it has like 200 silk moth species but if you look at the amount of birds and plants and just how big brazil is with such awesome forests it's probably the best country in the world when it comes to nature it's so beautiful but it's also the most ungrateful country in the world because the government is doing their best to destroy all of it terrible terrible Stuff should be protected now. <sighs> anyway, let's, let's, not, let's not go too far into politics. Still want to keep this a bit lighthearted. Somebody asked me, would I would like to go to the Bantimuren Butterfly Sanctuary in Indonesia? Yeah, I would like to go to every butterfly sanctuary, but I can't, you know. I mean, if I was in Indonesia right now, I would go there, but uh, traveling is not cheap. <clears throat> I don't have any money to travel the world, certainly not to see a butterfly farm. So of course I'd like to see it, if that's your question, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see each and every butterfly farm in the world, but uh, yeah. Paulina asks, why are you so good looking? Well, very funny girl. Oh. Okay, next one. How does it feel when you communicate with fans of your channel, both online and real life? Mm, I like it. That's why I'm doing this video right now. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't engage with you guys like this. Uh, here's a funny fa fun fact, you know. When growing up, I never had that many friends. I wasn't friendless, but uh, basically I've always had like one or two very good friends that know everything about me that i tell everything that happens to me in daily life that they can share all my feelings with they're great two great important people for me i'm not going to say their names on youtube because uh, ah, it's a bit of my private life but you know instead of having 100 100 friends i just have two very good ones and that's okay i don't need more than that but uh, it is new to me you know to um to meet so many new people, to talk to so many strangers is new for me. Because I guess 
I was ne I've never been that popular. I still don't consider myself that popular. But uh, it's weird how if you are online, if you are internet famous, I mean, I ha okay, I still have a small channel with 6,000 subscribers, so please don't think that I'm some kind of narcissist that thinks he's famous for having a YouTube channel. Okay, that's not, that's not it. But if you have like internet points, I didn't notice, suddenly people do want to hang out with you. People think you're cool, they want to meet up with you, uh, which is okay, I enjoy it. I enjoy meeting new people, but it is weird that uh, like two or three years ago, it feels like not many people wanted to associate with me. You know, the average person didn't really want to do anything with me. Uh, suddenly now I have this internet thing, suddenly, suddenly people want to, want to be social with me. That's strange because I, I never changed as a person. I'm still the same guy that I was two or three years ago. Except that I now have like a bit of internet fame or something. And now that makes me cool. I don't know. I think it's that's weird. That's a stupid feeling. Because, you know, it makes you feel like people don't really care for who you are. But more for like what you have to offer. I don't know. I do have to say uh, all the people I've met so far through YouTube have been really kind to me and amazing. I, I, I don't have a single negative experience and if I had one, I would say it. I'm honest like that, okay? If, if I meet someone and uh, something goes wrong and it's awkward, then I will fully admit it. But uh, no, so far it's been great. I did meetups in real life, one in Amsterdam. I think 12 people showed up that day. Went to London, met a few of you. Um, some of you even invited me to their house in the Netherlands. So I sure made a lot of friends. So yeah, that, that makes me happy, you know. But it is a weird feeling that people now suddenly like you, and not a few years ago. Well, you've all, well, you haven't changed as a person. So it's like, ah, do they? I always ask myself, do they really like me, or do they like who I am online or what I represent? But I try not to overthink it. But um, what are your future goals for your general entomology career? Well, uh, I, I said in this video before that I tried to study biology twice and I failed. It's my biggest regret in life because I've always wanted to be a researcher and academic. I do all of this for knowledge. And it sucks I wasn't qualified for that, but I'm not giving up. My biggest entomology goal would be to become a researcher. That's really what I want. That's my dream. My secondary objective is to um, work with insects full-time. Um, my biggest problem in life right now is work. I have a very boring job in a warehouse where I have to lift heavy boxes and it makes me very tired. It makes it hard to do all this YouTube stuff at the same time. And you know, I would love to, to remove that annoying shitty job from my life. So I have more, I, my, first, my first objective right now is somehow become self-sustaining. Maybe I can do it through YouTube, I don't know. YouTube is not, is not a gold mine. But um, if I can find just one way to sustain myself with insects full time, that's my first objective. And then my second objective would be studying. So, uh, good news is I am, I, I said the same thing before in my video again, but uh, I am negotiating a full-time job with insects right now. It may take a few months to talk everything out, but if this is going to happen, it's going to change my life forever. It means I will be full-time working with moths, breeding moths and nothing else. That's basically my dream. So that would make my life very happy and fulfilling if this happened, please. Please hope it's gonna happen. But uh, I, I, it's not 100% certain yet, so I'm a bit nervous, you know, it, it could turn out could be that they say no sorry we're not going to do this i'm not allowed to discuss the details yet which is annoying so you'll have to remember this vague response but um, and you also asked me what are your so ask me what are your future goals for my youtube channel well it's easy 10,000 subscribers that's it i don't think insects are so popular especially moths 
that I can get a million subscribers with that. With that, it's uh, very specific. I mean, 10,000 subscribers would be amazing. And that's my goal right now. If I can be go beyond that rate, but I don't think... Uh, I think that's about the maximum that I can get. Oh wow, my hair really looks terrible today. It's because of this stupid Christmas hat. I think my hair is like static now because of that thing. Oh, whatever. Can you do another video showing all the caterpillars and insects you have at the moment? Ah, uh, here's the truth. I don't like showing them. I hate making those videos. Because it's focused too much on uh, animals in captivity. I also don't want to be one of those stupid YouTube breeders like, Oh, look at all my tarantulas! Here's my garage full of insects! I hate those kind of people. It's uh, a bit shallow, you know? Like, oh, look at how many insects I have! I like to focus on quantity over quality and showing off this whole collection of plastic boxes and cages looks ugly. Last but not least, I'm also ashamed of the room that I keep them in. It's usually very messy and I don't like cleaning it up to make one video. That being said, coincidentally, uh, I did make one of those videos recently. And, uh, Well, you have good luck because I, I literally just made one of those videos because I was bored and I scheduled it to upload in February. Why February? Well, because sometimes I re record a video and then I schedule it to upload months in advance. Just so, uh, that's so my YouTube channel keeps automatically uploading videos, even if I'm not there. So you have to schedule something in advance that helps. But so the, so the answer is yes, one of those videos is coming in February, but second of all, it sucks because I hate doing those kind of videos. So I really prefer to give attention to singular species, like I'm going to show you one species and tell you everything about that species, but not show you like 30 species and say, wow, this is my moth collection, I have 5,000 moths. Someone asked me, what's your favorite native moth? My favorite native moth. What is my favorite native moth? Uh, what's my... God, I don't even know. Uh, probably the garden tiger moth, Arctiochaia. I know it's a very common thing. It's not something many people would be shocked or amazed to see. But I just like their color, they are very charming. They're also one of the first moths that I ever bred. And let's see what's, what's another question and that is... When is your birthday? Birthdays are not important. Okay, I'm 26 years old. And I don't want to make a big deal out of my birthday, so... Um, what's your favorite non lepidopteran insect? Well, I like things that glow in the dark, so that's probably going to be fireflies. You know, these, let me show you a clip of one of my favorite bioluminescent fire beetles from South America. Yeah, those guys, I really love them. I would love to see those. How many species of rare moths have you bred and how many do you want to? Uh, uh, I've bred zero rare moth species. And uh, I also don't really like to focus on how rare something is, you know. Biology is not about breeding rare stuff or looking at rare things. I mean, if you look at my YouTube channel, you'll see the majority of species that I show are very common. Uh, I give attention to the most common species in the world, probably. Like, uh, I will breed... Uh, well, it's, for some instances, like uh, these very small brown geometric moths, you know. Or uh, these very small tiger moths. I still breed everything that's small and boring and common. And that's how it should be, you know? 
When something is common, it doesn't mean it's not interesting or pretty. Some of the best moths that I've ever raised were common ones. And I, I don't like this culture of uh, like these insect breeders who will like stroke their ego because oh, I built the rarest species in the world. So I'm Bart Coppins and I'm, I bred this rare species. Ooh, nobody cares, dude. Oh, I don't like that. No, really? The thing about being an insect breeder is it's not a big of a deal. Okay, nobody, nobody really, it's not, it's like, if you own a Ferrari, then some people are going to be impressed. If you were an athlete, a very good uh, sportsman, you win an Olympic gold medal, then okay, people are going to be, look up to you, you know, they're going to be proud. But breeding insects? Ah, oh, nobody cares. It's, it's just a specific thing. Imagine me going up to on a date and say, hey girl, did you know I bred Eogro at Gimeli? Ooh, you want to date me now? No, nobody cares. So I believe the very few people on this planet who somehow still share, share a passion for, for this weird and obscure specific thing, they should really be inclusive, accept each other and not like, oh, hey, you're gonna breed the rarest moths in the world, you know, that's, that's, that's a, that's not a nice thing to be focused on. So, uh, I mean, yeah, it doesn't answer your question, by the way. What is the rarest piece I bred? It's probably the Acanthobramea europea, the European owl moth. Uh, they're very rare because they only live on one volcano in Italy, around the Monte Vulture, and then nowhere else in the world. So the whole species only lives in this small area, the size, uh, well, 50 square kilometers. So, and that's all there is. If you if that if you would deforest that small area, then the species would be extinct immediately. So yeah, that's probably the rarest piece that I bred. And being said, I really don't give a shit about the rare. And I think people who, who are focused on rare things are stupid. They don't understand biology. If you ever see like a collector or a breeder brag about how rare, how rare his insects are, his, his motivation is probably wrong. His heart isn't in it. If you truly love insects, then you love all of them, including the common ones. In fact, common species are more important than rare species because they have more impact on the environment. Something that only has a small population or only found in one small place in the world will have less of an impact than something that is widespread and abundant because the widespread and abundant animal is going to be a bigger source of food to other animals it's going to have more interactions etc it's just more widespread you know so that answers your question mm. And um, I think that's it. I think that we answered everything. Which marks the end of this video. Thank you all for watching the Christmas video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure not having a good day. I just got a police ticket. Why? Well, yesterday I was driving home on my bike. I ride my bike from work, okay? Because uh, in the Netherlands, we Dutch people, we really just ride driving our bikes or everywhere. Anyways, in my country, it's forbidden to look on your phone while you're driving, even if you're, even if you're riding a bike. So I was reading my WhatsApp while I was cycling home, and then the police car pulled up and uh, they fired me. 104 euros. I think that's like 120 dollars. So that's a good start of the holidays. Anyway, <coughs> thank you for watching. I'm gonna go do other stuff now. Bye bye. See you later.